Well, NATO has taken steps to stop the violence in Syria spilling across its borders. It's approved the deployment of the Patriot anti-missile batteries along the border with Turkey. And it fears the Syrian regime could use chemical weapons at home and abroad. International relations expert Robert Patman joins me now. Robert, why has NATO made this deployment on the Turkish border? Well, Turkey requested it about a month ago, Simon, after um, a, a, a shell from Syria strayed into uh, the Turkish territory and killed five people. And there have been a lot of other incidents where shells uh, from the Syrian uh, territory have actually strayed over the border into southeast Turkey. Uh, and NATO has now responded positively to the Turkish request. And something like six batteries of anti-missile Patriot systems will be deployed within the next three weeks in Turkey. And presumably the idea is to send a signal to Bashir Assad in uh, Syria, and also to minimize the possibility uh, that Turkey uh, will, get, uh, will come under pressure domestically to take action in response to these uh, shells which keep straying into Turkish airspace. OK, so NATO is reassuring Turkey that they're going to help them out. Um, but also in the headlines about Syria at the moment is this perceived threat of chemical weapons that the Syrian regime could use them uh, either against Turkey or, or, more importantly, at home against the rebels. How likely is that threat? Well, I, I, I don't think we can minimise this because uh, the administration, the Obama administration in Washington, warned uh, Assad on Monday uh, that there will be consequences in the use of chemical weapons. There's no doubt about it that Turkey has, well, it, it's, or most international observers believe that Turkey has supplies of certainly mustard gas and sarin and nerve gas. Syria. Um, in, in Syria, I'm, I, yep. I beg your pardon. And uh, there's, there is concerns that given the ruthlessness of the regime, given the fact that it's used the full range of uh, conventional weapons against its own population in the civil war in Syria, uh, there's, you know, there is a concern that as the military situation deteriorates for the Assad regime, that it will use uh, these chemical weapons. Now, as yet, there is little sign these weapons are about to be used, but there is a mounting fear as the as this military situation deteriorates that the Assad regime may be tempted to, in a sort of end game scenario, well, use the weapons against the advancing rebels. Well, well, let's talk end game scenario. Do you think that we are entering that phase now? We've got the fighting around Damascus. And the rebels sort of, you know, seem to be on, you know, creeping up onto, onto the capital. I don't think we're quite there yet, but the, the, certainly the, the, the uh, Free Syrian Army has made considerable advances in the last month. It's, uh, made, as, as your commentary indicated earlier, uh, the rebels are now penetrated quite deeply into Damascus, and they've also made advances around uh, Syria's second most important city, Aleppo. And so there are signs the rebels are gaining momentum. Uh, whether we're quite on the brink of collapse, I don't know. But it, 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 certainly the situation is not looking good for Assad. I think the long-term prognosis for the Assad regime is, is very grim indeed. I don't see how it can really go on for too long, okay. given the pressures. All right. Well, given that you know, they're in fighting Damascus now, has Assad hung on too long for him just to be able to walk away now? Would, he, you know, would, would NATO and the other world powers <clears throat> let him just walk away now if he said, OK, I give up? Or is it too late? That's an interesting question, Simon. Ban Ki-moon, the UN uh, Secretary General, hinted that uh, yesterday that, he, that uh, Assad would not be allowed simply to seek asylum uh, because he's violated um, international human rights and would be want would brought, he would be deemed accountable for these violations. He hinted yesterday that he didn't see a scenario where Assad would be allowed to walk away. Of course, Assad may approach Russia and seek asylum there, and that would be a difficult one for the Russians. But uh, I don't think all the indications are that Assad, uh, as he puts it in his own words, intends to live and die in Syria. OK, well, we'll see how the end game plays out. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Professor you. Payment.